So I got the van loaded with gas, food, and lots of camera gear for the next four days. I'm gonna take a very special adventure, uh, doing an astrophotography trip in Dead Valley National Park for the next four days. Uh, I've been looking forward to this trip for a very long time. I want to capture the winter Milky Way in a very nice place. And now is the best time of year to do it. It's uh, early February, we are in California, and it's the best time to capture all those beautiful regions in the winter Milky Way, like the Ryan constellation, uh, Cygnus, the California Nebula, and all that. So uh, I decided to go to Death Valley National Park because uh, the forecast is uh, clear skies for the next four days. Uh, it's also a forecast like a strong wind for the next couple of days, so I don't know how I'm gonna do with that. Probably it's gonna be a bit tricky, as you know, when you're doing astrophotography in windy conditions, it's always difficult, but we'll try to pull it off. I know the Valley National Park extremely well. I travel there every year. It's one of my favorite national parks and probably my favorite for doing astrophotography. There are endless compositions, uh, beautiful landscapes. Everything is very special about the Valley. I also run uh, astrophotography workshops there, uh, so I want also to look for new, scout for new locations. And now in this trip, I'm gonna show you how I do everything. So how I approach my scouting, my planning, how I, uh, what's the gear that I use for my Milky Way images, um, the compositions, my tracking setup, and literally everything, how I do my shots. I've been driving now for five hours. I live in the San Francisco Bay Area, which is about eight to nine hours from that valley. And I'm almost now getting there, so it's gonna be like maybe two, three more hours and I will be in Death Valley. Now is the sunset. I'm passing through the southern part of the California Sierra. And hopefully I will be in time to capture uh, the Milky Way, my first location in Badwater Basin. So I will let you know how that goes. And apart from that, I hope you enjoyed this adventure with me. I'm gonna take you with me in the field everywhere. So let's go to the valley. Valley National Park and today I'm exploring the Death Valley floor. I'm looking for the cotton balls in the cotton ball basin. This is a place in the Death Valley floor where there are some uh, patterns close by the, by the salt, the rains uh, and so on. And I've been hiking here in several trips and I never found them. I've been hiking here many miles. Um, the Death Valley floor is huge, there are many miles and I was never lucky to find them. So today I'm hiking again trying to find them and the goal is to capture the cotton balls with the winter Milky Way. We are in early February and it's the best time to capture the arch of the winter Milky Way. So I'll do my best to find some nice patterns and then come back at night to shoot the winter Milky Way. So I'm back at the van after the scouting session. I came back with a bittersweet feeling. On the one hand, I am very, very happy that I found these uh, perfect cotton balls that I've been looking for in many trips. I finally found them after so many miles uh, hiking there. But on the other hand, it became extremely windy. Uh, it's been windy the whole day since just last night. But it's been like a very, very extremely windy, especially after sunset. I was actually trying to film something uh, to show you how I do the blue hour composition and so on. And I almost broke my camera, it just literally fell with a wind gust. Are you done? Are you done? So I decided to just came back to the car, I shoot my blue hour images for the panorama, came back to the car, 
And I'm just uh, keeping my fingers crossed because it's extremely windy right now. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's terrible. So there's no way I can do any astrophotography like this, uh, especially considering doing like a tracking, uh, tracking panoramas and things like that. Last night I was shooting in Batwater Basin. It was uh, windy, but I managed to, to capture some two or three minute exposures. I think I captured a very nice uh, panorama, but tonight I think it's gonna be much more difficult. So I'll be here in the in the van praying so the wind stops. It doesn't look like the forecast is a uh, wind for the entire night, but we'll see what happens. Uh, Death Valley is a magical place, and you never know. So we'll see. So Bon asked me how, but the miracle happened. After four hours waiting here, after coming back from the sunset. I was uh, editing my image from last night with a laptop, having some dinner, just uh, you know, making some time until until uh, have, you know, waiting for the miracle. And I just stepped outside ten minutes ago, and it's uh, the wind has died down. I mean, it's still a little bit breezy, still a little bit wind, but this I think it's doable, it's manageable. So now it's a perfect time to go. Um, I got all my camera gear ready, all my tripods, cameras, everything. I'm looking forward to doing like a longer session with the Sony a7 III Astro Modified. I just Astro Modified this camera before this trip. I did it on Spencer's camera. I love uh, the service with my previous uh, Sony a7 II. I love that camera, but I wanted to step up the game. So I got the Sony a7 III. Uh, it's like a brand new camera. Tested last night in the Batwater Basin and I was uh, very happy and surprised by the results. But tonight I want to do like a longer session, test more focal lengths and more things. It's a very beautiful night outside, it's a pitch black, dark sky is here in Death Valley. So let's go to the location! So welcome back to the Cotton Ball Basin. After a super extremely windy evening where I could barely stand with my tripod, um, I'm back here, thankfully there is no wind right now. I've been all the evening hiking, scouting, finding new compositions and after a long long hike I could finally find these uh, patterns, these cotton balls and my goal is to shoot now the Milky Way, the winter Milky Way with Orion and all the beautiful constellations with, uh, uh, with these uh, beautiful patterns in the foreground and let's see how it goes. I'm gonna start uh, mounting my tripod and my tracker, all my gear. I'm gonna explain to you right now what I'm gonna use. So let's get it started. So the setup is ready and I'm gonna start the session now. Uh, just to explain briefly what I'm gonna use here. Uh, the base is my tripod. This is a very beefy sturdy tripod. It's the Sunway Photo T3640CM. It's the one I use always when I need something uh, durable, resistant and you know, especially for tracking since the uh, plate is covering the, the, the base of the tracker. So um, this is my perfect tri uh, tripod for tracking. Uh, then my EQ base is the Skywatcher Star Adventurer EQ base. As you see, the, the tracker and the base are different, and that's for one reason. I have both trackers, the Ioptron and the Skywatcher. Uh, I love the Ioptron, it's my favorite tracker and it's the mount that I'm gonna use today. However, I don't like the Ioptron base. It's, I think it's not very good, um, it's very small, very difficult to tweak. So that's why I use the Skywatcher Star Adventurer. Uh, the Skywatcher is a very good tracker, but there's some things I don't like. The scope and the batteries, uh, I don't know, I, I get tired of that. Um, apart from that, I'm using the uh, declination bracket from the Optron with the counterweight, just to compensate all this gear. Then we have here several pieces for tracking panoramas. All these are from Sunway Photo. Uh, this is a head that you can use for leveling um, and adjusting the level. Here we have some nodal slides that you can use for doing the panoramas. With these novel slides, you can simply listen to the clicks according to the degrees that you set, like 15 degrees, 30 degrees, whatever you set. So you don't have to be checking the stars to see how it's overlapping the panorama. Using this, it's gonna be great. And then the L bracket and another novel slide so I can tilt down and tilt up. So this is the 
general gear. The camera is the Sony a7 III Astro Modify. I Astro Modify by Spencer's camera uh, just right before the strip uh, and it's working perfectly so far. Also the lens is the Sony 20mm 1.8. That's the lens I always use when I want to do like some um, wide landscapes and you know landscape astrophotography things like that. So I always start with the 20 then I jump into longer focal lengths. And that's basically my gear. I just see a few things, but uh, when you are doing tracking uh, panoramas, it's a bit more complex. So I prefer to use something like this. So I'm gonna start taking now the first test shot, and then I'll explain to you which are the settings and how I'm gonna take the images. So I'm taking now my first shot. I took a test shot first to see my to check if my focus was fine, everything looked correct. And I'm not taking my first image. Uh, the settings I'm using is uh, f2.8, so I'm closing uh, one stop just to uh, get more sharpness, eliminate all the comma and all the vignetting and all that. I'm using um, two minutes. And my ISO is uh, 1250, so it's like a relatively low ISO. And with this camera, I've noticed that you are capturing so much light that you can close your aperture even to 2.8 one is full stop and still capture like you know incredible light with two minutes so before i used to shoot more like uh, with this lens and these settings i was shooting mostly like around four minutes uh, right now with this astromotic camera i noticed the difference that i'm capturing much more light so it's, it's enough with this so we'll see how the settings go I'm gonna wait for the first shot and after this I'm gonna keep shooting from right to left and then I'll get back to the initial, tilt my camera up and then go back to the left. That way I'm going to create probably two panels and let's wait and see how it goes. Here's the first image and looking at the details now. Woohoo! Wow, the air glow is incredible. Yeah, everything looks fine. So I'm gonna keep shooting now from right to left. So I have finished my panorama. It's been uh, nine images, nine vertical shots. I've captured the entire Milky Way, uh, winter Milky Way arch uh, with Orion constellation, the Pleiades. Uh, Perseus, Cassiopeia, Andromeda, it's like a beautiful, beautiful uh, time of the year to capture the Milky Way. I know that we are all used to shoot the Milky Way during the normal core season, but it's really spectacular and especially with an astromotic camera. Um, what I'm gonna do right now, everything looks fine, air glow is incredible, a little bit of light pollution in the area towards the east, but apart from that everything looks fine. What I'm gonna do right now is to capture another panorama with the 35, uh, the Sony 35 1.4. Uh, the Milky Way arch is becoming lower in the horizon, so now maybe I can get away with one row, probably two, but I'm gonna try it anyway. So yeah, let's get into the uh, into the next shot. Well, after a few hectic minutes at the end of the session, uh, everything is finished. Uh, finally, the panorama with the 35 has taken 24 images at 30 seconds. I found the best settings uh, around that point, 30 seconds, f2.8, just to avoid all the comma and, and distortion that I commented before. And then the ISO was at uh, 3200. Uh, yesterday I was tracking with the same lens, uh, doing another panorama in Batwater Basin, very close to this location. And I was shooting for one minute, uh, like longer exposure. Uh, it took me the same number of images, around 24 images. And I noticed that by the time that I was shooting the second row, the upper row, uh, in the Milky Way, the arch was moving a lot. Um, even Orion was going down, getting closer to the horizon, losing the detail. The air glow was moving a lot. And I noticed like uh, when I was trying to merge the panorama before in the laptop, I noticed that I didn't like the, the merge, there was something strange. So today I decided to change the settings uh, just to shoot something shorter, like 30 seconds. And that way it's taking like half time. And I think that everything looks fine today, it looks better. We'll see in the computer when I merge everything. Um, the panorama with the 20 looks fantastic. Uh, the air glow tonight has been incredible. It's been like red, uh, green, it's been so, so beautiful. 
So I can't wait to edit all these images and see how, how they look. And finally, I took a couple of images with my 50 millimeters, uh, my Bogie Lander, uh, Apple Lantar. It's a very uh, uncommon lens, but I love it. It's my favorite 50 millimeters. Uh, with the 50 mil, I took a uh, couple of shots of the details of Orion when it was getting closer to the horizon. And that was it. So that's ready. Now what I'm going to do is capture my foreground images. I took them in the blue hour. So I always try to capture these images in the blue hour just to make sure that I have all the detail and no noise. But uh, I always, if I had a chance, I like taking more images. And right now it's dark. Uh, there's no sunrise until maybe four or five hours. So I'm gonna capture some night images of the of the cotton balls, and then I will see if I use the blue hour shots or the night shots. I will see how how they merge. And that's pretty much everything for this session. I hope you like it, and I'll show you later how the images look like. another adventure in Death Valley. I hope you like it, you enjoy it, and you found it inspirational. And if you want to keep learning and improving your Milky Way photography, I highly recommend to check out my Milky Way course. It's called uh, Capture the Milky Way. And there you'll find everything that I use on the video, but with much more detail, explaining everything step by step, from the setup, the technique, and especially the post processing. That's one of the most challenging things, so I focus a lot on tutorials where I explain all the steps that I follow in Lightroom, Photoshop and the different software to edit my images. Also, if you prefer to learn in the field, I recommend checking my Milky Way Astrophotography workshops. I run workshops in some of the most uh, popular and famous national parks in the country like Death Valley, Utah, where you have beautiful dark skies and also plenty of nice landscapes to capture Milky Way and other astrophotography. Um, apart from that, lastly, I recommend to download my Milky Way calendar. This is 100% free and it will help you to plan your Milky Way images for this season. You can find also the link in the comments and the description. And that's everything. If you like this kind of videos, please let me know in the comments or if you have any other questions. Um, like, subscribe to my channel and probably I will see you in the next video. So happy captures and clear skies.